Second oral question, the Earl of Cloncarty. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, I declare my interests as set out in the register. The Government's response to the landscape review was accompanied by a public consultation. We will publish a response to the consultation shortly, setting out plans to support national parks and areas of outstanding natural beauty, including helping them deliver climate mitigation and adaptation. Our Farming and Protected Landscapes programme is a key delivery mechanism and provides funding for farmers and land managers to work in partnership with protected landscapes teams to deliver projects on climate, nature, people and place. My Lords, would the Minister agree that the national parks are flagship assets in the fight against climate change, but that fight has been made much harder through cuts to funding of 40% in real terms in the last 10 years? Does the Minister believe the National Park Authorities and the, the AOMBs together require fresh powers, as the Glover Review recommended, and new funding in order to affect nature recovery and, crucially, increase biodiversity, and that farmers too need to be a properly effective ally in this fundamentally important ambition? I entirely uh, agree with the Noble uh, Lord about the value our protected landscapes give in terms of our policies not just on climate change mitigation, but also on reversing the tragic uh, decline in species. We have increased spending on areas of outstanding natural beauty by 15% this year. I concede inflationary pressures are challenging for all protected landscapes, but I'd urge him to look at the other areas of funding we're providing. The farming and protected landscapes that I mentioned earlier and it has 1,800 projects uh, for benefiting climate and nature right across our, our, our protected landscapes. Our £750 million Nature for Climate Fund will see large amounts of that being spent in our protected landscapes because that's where 60% of our peat is, 50% of our triple SIs, and that's where the focus of that fund will go. And of course, in addition to that, we've got private and blended finance, which national parks are very well able to, uh, to get. Would my noble friend accept that uh, one of the difficulties at the moment is that the have regard clause is actually weakening the potential input uh, that national parks might place? <coughs> Could this be amended uh, through <coughs> the process of the levelling up bill? And what steps has the government taken to lever in more private funding to ensure that there are greater powers for, for example, water companies to fund nature based solutions going forward? We are. Uh, hugely uh, um, uh, admiring of Julian Glover's report, and we have Im already implemented uh, large measures of it. One of it centres around governance, and that is where uh, it will fit into our green finance strategy, which is about to be refreshed in March to bring in all the different players, different parts of government, and making sure we're responding to the huge potential that lies in ESG money and other offsets that can benefit our landscapes. And these are the most treasured landscapes uh, in these islands, and we want to make sure that they are getting uh, the lion's share of this, kind of, um, of this kind of finance. My Lords, uh, I congratulate, actually, DEFRA on the Farming in Protected Landscape Scheme. It's worked extremely well. But the fact is that biodiversity in AOMBs and national parks is no better than the rest of the UK as an average, which is extremely uh, poor in terms of international um, uh, examples. So what is DEFRA going to do to actually improve that beyond that particular scheme to make sure there really is a difference? Surely these days our protected areas should be better in terms of biodiversity than the rest of the country. Yeah. Our ambition is to get them to, uh, to to reverse uh, any declines in species, we've got policies that we'll, we'll see across the country uh, a, 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 an end to the decline of species by 2030 and uh, an uptick in the populations we're seeing across our, our, our islands. But on, the on a particular point around, for example, 35,000 hectares of peat uh, we want to see restored by 2025, 280,000 hectares by 2050. AONBs and national parks will be absolutely fundamental because that's where most of this uh, lies. 
same interest uh, uh, as on national parks as, as registered uh, in the register. Um, my Lords, returning to the 40 per cent cut in real terms uh, over the last decade, which the national parks uh, have, have received, uh, I, I should say at a time when they have never been more popular and more demands on their services. Uh, the noble Lord, the Minister, has talked about uh, uh, other funds that are going into the national parks, but does he accept that that isn't core funding, that's going into other organisations in the parks. It's actually the national parks themselves, the rangers, the services, the visitors centres that are core to providing a good visitor experience and encouraging more people to go into the parks. Does he accept that we should be more ambitious about the role that the national parks can play? But if we do that, they do need more core funding, not these so, uh, not, uh, not the supplementary funding that the Minister is talking about. Yeah. I think national parks are very good at getting that money in, whether it's private sector blended finance. There's a very good arrangement called Revere between Palladium, uh, which is seeing some money going into supporting core uh, f uh, personnel, for example, in, in national parks to, project, to do projects right across those parks. But I, I do think that uh, all areas of government have have challenges at the moment, particularly in, 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 uh, in light of inflationary pressures. Uh, and I think the National Parks have proved themselves very resilient, and I want to make sure that we can find more money for them in the future, uh, and that is a key part of our decisions going forward into the next spending round. Uh, my Lords. Thank you. My Lords, some of our National Parks believe that they could better address climate and nature emergencies if they were added to the list of authorities who have a general power of competence under the Localism Act 2011. I wonder whether the Noble Lord, the Minister, could tell us whether His Majesty's Government has any plans to bring that about. Uh, I think I might have to write to the right, Reverend Prelate on that. But I, I do think that uh, as we look at implementing uh, the landscape reviews recommendations that we can uh, and through our biodiversity duty that we are imposing on public bodies through the Environment Act uh, I think will address that and so I hope we are seeing uh, the determination of this government to tackle issues which when national parks were created 70 years ago simply didn't exist climate change wasn't talked about uh, biodiversity was stable or rising those emergencies need to be reflected in the policies they take forward. My Lords, my Lords, uh, national parks across the country are losing thousands of trees because of disease. Uh, in the Lake District, Forestry England are cutting down large trees in the Ennodel Valley and Windlatter across many hectares of land. So can I ask the Noble Lord, the Minister, what assessment has been made as to the impact on wildlife as to these loss of trees, including red squirrel populations, and what plans are in place, including the timescales for replanting with native species? Uh, I can't give her a, an accurate assessment of what impact uh, tree disease or indeed Storm Arwen in Northumberland, for example, which saw probably millions of trees being uh, blown down and undoubtedly it has an effect on wildlife. Wildlife can benefit from different ages of woodland in a, in a, in a, in a landscape. So I hope that uh, the replanting schemes that are happening because of whether it's disease like ash dieback or uh, events like Storm Arwen will see uh, those, those areas planted as quickly as possible. It's not the National Park is doing that, it's the land owners and the land managers within those areas and Forestry England will be assisting them and giving grants for that to happen. My Lords. The Landscape Review recommended uh, that uh, there should be an upgrade in the current duty to uh, foster economic and social growth in the National Parks and AONBs. Please, could the Minister confirm that the uh, farmers and other economic activities going on in those areas uh, is not just limited to tourism and other um, uh, sporting and other activities? The Noble Lord is uh, absolutely right that, that it should not be just restricted to what one might term that the uh, visitor uh, economy. 
It's about keeping people living in these landscapes. It's about making sure they have the opportunities to uh, conduct businesses of all kinds and that there are skills and opportunities for young people. Uh, and so when we're talking about levelling up, I always feel we should also be talking about levelling out into some of the more remote places uh, and making sure the opportunities for families, for young people and for entrepreneurs exist in those landscapes as well. My Lords. My Lords, we have a virtual contribution from Lord Campbell Savers. My Lords, with climate change being the root cause, a flooding of property in towns like Keswick in the Lake District National Park. Instead of imposing flooding remediation costs on property owners, why not amend the law by placing legal responsibility on companies like United Utilities to more effectively manage their water assets and for them to community block insure against the risk of flooding damage to residential, commercial, and community assets in areas designated at risk from their company's operations. Flood ray is inadequate. As the minister who brought flood ray into being, I uh, think it has been an enormous success. I don't know the exact circumstances that the noble lord is referring to in terms of, uh, of that part of the world. Uh, but you, there are a number of levers on United Utilities to make sure that they are fulfilling more than that just their statutory duty to provide clean water and get rid of sewage. But I will look into the matter and, if necessary, write to the Noble Lord. <laughs>